people to be your McDonald's or whatever for people who just want the I want the high THC and yeah, they're, they're going to be educated. Price, you know, some people will have price as their main con, you know thing they've got to consider when buying, and others want to have a look more at quality, yeah. flavor, taste, you know, content like you get in the food market or, or wine market or anything else. I think it's having that choice is what is crucial and interesting to a to a, a kind of beneficial positive market. 100 percent i think because if like you say if there isn't then a passion for it if we just become mindless consumers of the new 45 percent thc's out i think that's, that's when you're I mean, much like, more likely to, to not minimize the harms personally and you'll get a lot more likely to get a lot more problems i i think well isn't that the paradox in the obviously in all these lawful markets they suddenly go from thc is the bad thing it causes all the psychosis and all of the problems to then that's the single point of marketability and i think it becomes the single point of marketability because of the fragility of the science we've all been going terpenes 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 and we're like yes to a certain degree flavonoids yes to a certain degree the newest science is like volat these volatile sulfuric compounds and these other organically occurring uh compounds that break down that are so much more fragile that they don't store into cure into cure so different levels you can get this yeah is, basically we're on page one of the book difficult to and yeah, yeah, we've, yeah we've built this global industry and as i said before the difference i could give you the same plant that i've grown and smoked the same bud literally break it in half two different experiences until we yeah. recognize that we're going to have a problem with the marketing matching it because it should be as, as uh, uncle kush said on the podcast follow your nose I may or may not have, you know, jars of weed from different plants. And I'll know what I want to consume that that moment by smelling each jar. The one yeah. that then my body yeah, goes, right. damn, I want that right now. Do you know what I mean? Whereas if in my head I go, no, I want the, I'm going to go with the lemon thing or I'm going to go with the, this thing or I'm going to go with the, that thing. It, it's not the same thing. It might end up mismatching. I mean, it might not, not think that I want what I want, but when you smell it, your body reacts. Your, it's a visceral thing of going, no, that, I want that. That's how yeah, we put tenders absolutely in with food. the right, well, good quality weed. That's one hundred percent. Yeah, and I think that that's what creates a, a problem with this prescription model. Like I see pharmacies dying across the high streets. I would love to see that little cross on the, you know, the internet, the green cross thing. Yeah, yeah, the pharmacies yeah. on the other side, a green cannabis leaf, and then inside for all these prescription patients, even if they can't distribute it there, you can go in and smell the products that are available for prescription. So you can go in and actually have that. And figure because that I'm not leads sure. you far more. I've been than hearing many else. people would be buying if they were allowed to smell the product in the UK. <laughs> well, I mean, again, yeah, there are some, and I think this is where it comes back to what I mentioned before about like EU GMP. And I think this is maybe where you had a problem with uh, pharma seeds or why the market is kind of lessening. You're trying to give them a, a product that is regulated and qualified for this, whereas what they're kind of doing is shopping the world. And they're ringing people and going, crap, we, we're prescribing on 20 to 1. They'll ring a guy and go, we need, we need a 20 to 1. We can put that cultivar in. Oh, we've run out of the line of that. Get this cult. And they can, and most of them are produced to rec standards in rec markets, as it were. And then yeah, I mean, all coming the through the packet time. packaging. Yes, but it's, it's then, as I spoke of with many guests in the past, wouldn't you then be incentivized if you're the rec market in, say, Canada, and you also have a company that's medical on this side and rec this side, the people who are going to smell it and buy it from the dispensary and look at it and really on all of the aesthetics, you want the aesthetic product, surely. The one that yeah. just meets the requirements and hits the number, you'd send that over there and they can't smell it or touch it until they've ripped the seal. Once you rip the seal, you can't give the fuck a back. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's like you said, it's the opposite of leading to it. And I feel like I, either that or what you, here's an idea, folks. What if you got like, you should get like a, what do they call it? A, it's a wine tasting. You know, when you get little tiny shots of glasses. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Almost the first time you go to your pharmacy, you should be like, can I have? And they give you like one gram of each or something. It's so, there's there's got to be a better method than people spending thousands of pounds to find the fucking cultivar that works for them. And in yeah. the ideal model for me is they should go to that pharmacy and someone like yourself would be supplying that seed and that, that prescriber could go, do you want to grow it? And they would get access to the seed or a cutting. Do you know what I mean? That would be the best Very thing amazing. in the world for me. That would be amazing yeah. if we could get something like that. The people could but use the whole home home cannabis is different to medical cannabis. Yeah, it's better. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs>